If you're a year 13 about to begin university in the UK, or a high school senior about to start college, or anyone else who fits a similar description, the time is fast approaching where it is time to invest in a laptop that will carry you through your computer science degree for the next three to four years. This video will be targeted towards those who want to be very money conscious, so if this applies to you, be sure to keep on watching this video. Also, make sure to like this video and subscribe to stay tuned on everything I'm doing to also prepare for a computer science undergraduate degree. You may have seen a lot of YouTube videos or adverts highlighting the more higher-end laptop products, such as Apple's MacBook Pro or the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro. But the reality is, a lot of these products are, not, are just not affordable for the everyday student. In this video, I'll be going through what I believe are the most important computer specifications to look out for, and give a few examples of ideal laptops to invest in for your degree. So, what computer specifications are the most important? I'm sure that's the key question on your mind. Here are the three things that I believe are most important when it comes to researching about computer specifications on different laptops. The first is RAM size, as well as storage space and the actual processor. So, RAM size. RAM size will be particularly important when running programs or opening browser tabs, such as GitHub and Stack Overflow, when the time really needs. For an undergraduate on a budget, Anything about 8 gigabytes and up is an acceptable benchmark. Next is storage space. At university, you may end up with a variety of applications you want to install on your laptop, such as VS Code, Python Idle, Android Studio, database software such as MySQL and Node, JavaScript, etc. etc. That, on top of other applications you may wish to install, such as low-spec games such as Minecraft and voice over IP app Discord. Overall, I would say that the sweet spot would be around 256 gigabytes of storage space. Next is the processor. I'll be focusing on Intel processors, but of course there's other processors including Apple's M1 chip, which is of course more higher end, as well as the AMD chips and ARM chips, etc. But I'll be focusing on Intel. They have four flagship core processors, the i3, i5, i7, and i9. The i3 and i5 processors are more tailored towards budget-friendly customers, so it'll be a good starting point to look for laptops with these specifications. Again, I want to reiterate that these are the more budget-friendly laptops for students. Of course, if you're looking to game competitively, for example, the higher-end processors, particularly the i9, would be more suitable. I will now go through a couple of example laptops that may be more budget friendly. The majority of laptops I go through have i5 processors, but you can also find their cheaper i3 alternatives on the web. I've included the links to each of these laptops that I'm about to mention in the video description, so be sure to check that out. The first example is Acer's Aspire 7 laptop, with double my recommended storage and a 9 hour battery life. Next up is the Dell Inspiron 15 laptop, with up to 12 hours of battery life, perfect for long days at the department building or other remote work. Moving on, here's the HP Pavilion 15. This is an AMD, AMD processor with a relatively short battery life, however it's budget friendly and you can always carry around a laptop charger for long remote sessions with the laptop. My final st laptop starting point recommendation is Lenovo's IdeaPad 3 with an Intel i3 processor. It has limited RAM and a dual core, but for students who are looking for the cheapest of laptops without compromising too much on quality, then this is the perfect laptop to consider. I now want to briefly talk about monitors. Monitors are a great way to get a second larger screen that you can easily set up in your university hall room or wherever you will be based with an HDMI cable. To be budget friendly, there are plenty of low cost monitors at around 99 to 150 pounds that meet this need. That will be all from me. 
Thanks for watching this video and be sure to like and subscribe to stay tuned on my latest channel content. If you're new to my YouTube channel, be sure to check out my recent video of the, my channel update to find out more on what you will expect from my YouTube channel. And I hope you stay tuned for my next YouTube video. Bye.